Hi, I'm Jesus, and this video is on the secret science of CSGO skins. We're going to look into the ideas behind a lot of science-themed skins in CSGO and not only explain what's going on, but explain how Valve screwed a lot of them up. Sponsored by Loot Bear, the skin rental service where you can rent your favourite skins for a fraction of the cost, and a marketplace with a 0% sales fee. Now, before I start, a lot of people have been asking where I'm up to with trying to trade up for the number one lowest float SSG integrally in the world. So I thought I'd give you guys an update. Long story short, I've been doing a lot of trade ups recently, so many that I think I'm gonna need treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome, but in the process, I've managed to gather up a lot of inputs for an integrally trade up. So I wanna let you guys watch just how that went. And remember, this trade-up has a 50% chance of ending in disaster. <sighs> okay. Okay. Deep breaths, deep breaths. This is it. Here we go. Um, sorry, just, just prepping myself. <sighs> okay. One, two, three. Fuck yes! Huh. That, that was a, a good... Good fuck yes, I think people are going to clip that. Ah, uh, hold on. So yeah, I, I got the Integralian. It's just such a great skin. I really like it. I really love how vibrant the colours are. And as you can see, this one has a really clean finish and no real scratches you can make out on it either. Oh, sorry. By the way, I forgot to mention, this isn't actually the number one lowest float. It's just a, a standard float that I got from the trade-up. <laughs> forgot to mention that. Although, funny story. The reason I crafted this thing is that in the process of trying to craft the inputs for the number one lowest float integrally, I ended up with about 1,000 industrial grade skins that I couldn't use because their float was too high, but I was also having trouble selling. So I, I figured I'd have a go at trying to trade up for a standard integrally, and it ended up working. But at this point, as far as going for the lowest float version of this skin goes, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy a bunch of low float MP7 fades directly off people. Uh, that's the plan at this stage because uh, trying to craft the inputs myself has just been taking too long. So once I've done the M4A4 Emperor trade up video I've got planned, I'll get on to doing that. So anyway, let's start digging into some of these sciencey skins and probably the most obvious skins that stand out are the Teklu Burner and the Bunsen Burner. Now, I imagine a lot of you know what a Bunsen burner is. It's that little gas burner that you use to produce an open flame during high school science experiments. And the Teklu burner is actually pretty much the same thing, except it's capable of making an even hotter flame. So you might think these skins were intended as little references to the lab, but that's not really the case. You see, the original skin designer didn't give these skins their names. Vount did. The original name for these skins was actually Hot Rod, so they're probably a reference to the flames that motoring enthusiasts like to put on their cars. Valve changed the name because they've already got their own, much less interesting, Hot Rod skins in the game, but in the process, they gave the skins some new names that don't really make sense, because the Teklu Burner is meant to be hotter than the Bunsen Burner, but the Teklu Burner has the cold air yellow flame, and the Bunsen Burner has the hotter blue flame. I mean, isn't this kind of the wrong way around? And, and granted, I am being pretty pedantic here. Both these things can burn with blue or yellow flames, and I, I don't think the person that named them at Valve cared that much, but don't worry. The problems are going to get a lot worse than this. For example, we have the 2018 Nuke Collection. And the problem with this collection isn't that Valve are super lazy and reuse the same four texture patterns again and again. The problem is with the names. And at first glance, these names might seem cool and sciencey. For instance, we've got the Control Panel, the Nuclear Garden, the Core Breach, but then we've got the Cold Fusion. Now, at first glance, this name might seem to fit in fine, but it's actually wrong on every conceivable level. Firstly, Nuclear power plants do not do fusion. So fusion is where you take two small atoms and you crush them together to get a larger atom which releases energy in the process because the new atom has less mass and mass is essentially energy. Nuclear power plants don't do that. They do fission instead and fission is the opposite of fusion. Fission involves breaking apart a larger atom to create smaller ones and then the heat from that is generally used to run a steam turbine. So Fusion is the completely wrong type of process. It's got nothing to do with nuclear power plants, and that's only the half of it. So <laughs> fusion is what powers the sun. Hydrogen atoms at the center of the sun are crushed into helium atoms, and 
As you've noticed, the sun is kind of hot. Fusion is a hot process, and there's a lot of research into how we could potentially do it. It'd be revolutionary if we could, but we currently don't know how. And importantly, as I said, this is a hot process. It's hot fusion, it's high temperatures. So what is this cold fusion stuff? Well, long story short, it, it basically doesn't exist. So you see, in 1989, two otherwise quite respectable chemists publicly announced that they'd figured out how to get a fusion reaction to occur at room temperature. They couldn't fully explain how they got it to work, but they, they confidently claimed that they'd replicated the results dozens of times and they were 100% certain about it. And there was lots of media attention. People thought it might change the world, but then other scientists decided to give it a try. And they quickly discovered that the two original chemists were kind of full of shit because no one could explain the results and no one could replicate them. And if you can't explain something and you can't replicate it, well, it's not science, is it? So long story short, this skin is aimed after something that doesn't appear to exist. And even if it did, wouldn't happen at a nuclear power plant anyway. Although whoever named this skin at Valve does seem to be aware of the whole cold fusion debacle based on a pretty poignant flavor text. Anyway, the next skin is a Mag7 Hardwater from the Hydra case. And this skin's name appears to stem from a, a misunderstanding on Valve's part. So the original name that the creator gave it is Caustic, and that refers to the refraction of light by a curved surface in a way that creates a curve of concentrated light. And this particular skin appears to be based on the caustics generated by ripples on the surface of water. And that's all pretty straightforward, until Valve decided they wanted to give this thing a new name. You see, caustic is derived from the Greek and Latin words for burn, because concentrated light can burn you. But caustic has another meaning in English. It refers to alkaline corrosive substances, stuff that can also burn you. And alkaline is the opposite of acidic, if you're wondering. Acidic substances have very low pH, alkaline substances have very high pH. Now, hard water is water with a high pH, over 8.5. So you can see how it got chosen. The skin design is obviously based on water. Caustic can refer to highly alkaline substances and hard water is alkaline water. But it doesn't really work. Caustic as a name is about optics. It wasn't about having a high pH level. And Hard water isn't caustic anyway. It won't burn you. You can drink it safely. It can even be good for you sometimes. So uh, look, th there's clearly been a very genuine effort to keep the name consistent with what the designer originally intended, but it just hasn't quite worked out. There's been a couple of misunderstandings, but I should give Valve some credit as well, because there are some examples of where they nailed it. I mean, take, for example, the photic zone. A brilliant skin, I can't imagine what sort of person wouldn't like it. And we got the worst possible crappy, stupid looking skin, looks like a Nerf gun, not cool. And this skin's original name wasn't Photic Zone, it was Citizen, wh whatever that's meant to mean. But either way, Valve fixed it up. You see, the Photic Zone is the uppermost layer of a body of water which is exposed to considerable amounts of sunlight, enough to make photosynthesis viable. and. Of course, this means algae, seaweed, and green stuff, basically. So a blue and green skin, you can see how that fits. Uh, well done, Valve. And then there's the Tech 9 re-entry. And originally, this was just called the Red Blast. But then someone at Valve was like, hey, doesn't this look like the flame effect of a spacecraft re-entering the atmosphere? And no joke, it kind of does. Just check out this footage from onboard a space shuttle. So. This is a good little pick for a name, not to mention the hemoglobin, named after the red proteins in the blood responsible for transporting oxygen throughout the body, and the hexane, named after a hydrocarbon with six carbon atoms, presumably representing the six sides of the hexagons in the pattern. And finally, there is a serum, named after a major component of the blood seen here in yellow. So I think it's a cool name, but maybe not super accurate. But you know what? Overall, four out of eight of these names make scientific sense. So in conclusion, I think it's safe to say I am taking this shit way too fucking seriously. But I do like it when there's some lore behind skins. I find that interesting and that's why I made this video. Anyway, that's 
pretty much it for now. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe. A big thank you to my sponsor at Loot Bear. Loot Bear is a website where you can rent your favorite skins at a fraction of their ordinary cost. Just choose a plan that suits you and you can rent out multiple skins at once, swapping them in and out as you like so you can try out all sorts of different skins. Get discounts on your plan by buying multiple months up front and get 10% off using the code Azus. Now, on top of that, Loot Bear is also a marketplace a marketplace with no sales fees whatsoever. So if you want to cash out your skins and keep all the money, Loot Bear is the place to do it. Check them out, link is in the description. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your guts. I'm Jesus, thanks for watching, see ya.